Coming up on Arirang News, South Korean President Moon Jae-in urges his administration to handle the economic difficulties the country faces with calm and vigilance. Korea's economic fundamentals, he says, are still strong. South Korea's ruling party, the government and the Blue House meeting today say they're working to help local companies be more competitive in the face of Japan's trade restrictions. And they agree to draw up a bigger budget for next year. And Hong Kong's International Airport reopens after it was swarmed by protesters, but the world watches anxiously amid signs that the Chinese military might intervene. It's 4 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for tuning in to our afternoon newscast. I'm Devin Whiting. President Moon Jae-in says the challenges South Korea faces today will later help it avoid being swayed by others. He made the remarks at a luncheon earlier today at the Blue House with around 160 independence patriots and their relatives. The event comes ahead of National Liberation Day on Thursday, which commemorates the end of Japan's colonial rule over Korea. Here's the president. And although he did say Japan's undermining of Korea's efforts to develop friendly bilateral ties is disappointing, President Moon said the government will continue working to resolve the dispute diplomatically. He also highlighted how important it is to achieve peace and prosperity on the Korean peninsula by overcoming division, the unfinished goal of Koreans 100 years ago. He said the oneness of the people is desperately needed. A destroyer from the South Korean Navy's Cheonghae unit is bound for the Gulf of Aden for a six-month deployment to fight piracy. The ROKS Kangam Chan will switch places with the ROKS Tejo Young to protect South Korean ships operating in those waters until the end of February 2020. Since the Kangam Chan has reportedly undergone a weapons system upgrade, there's speculation that it might join the U.S.-led coalition to secure shipping routes in the Strait of Hormuz against Iran's aggressive actions against international oil tankers. Just a few days ago, Iran's foreign ministry said it hopes Seoul will not do that. The U.S. has been pressing South Korea and Japan to join the mission, but Seoul has yet to issue an official response. North Korea has given promotions to scientists it says researched and developed the regime's purported new weapons system. According to Pyongyang's Korean Central News Agency, Kim Jong-un handed out new ranks to 103 researchers who helped strengthen what it calls the regime's self-defense capability. The agency says North Korea has finished developing a powerful new weapons system. It has said before that a new weapons system was used in five separate test launches it's conducted since late July. Around 5,000 pro-democracy demonstrators in Hong Kong swarmed the territory's international airport on Monday, forcing it to close and canceling hundreds of flights. Flights are taking off again, but there are still disruptions. Our Cheshi Young tells us more. Due to the large number of people grounded yesterday, Hong Kong International Airport reopened two hours earlier than announced at 6 a.m. local time on Tuesday or 7 a.m. Korean time. But the websites of many major airlines show some flights as still cancelled. So if you are traveling in or out of Hong Kong, you should check with your airline or the Hong Kong airport website to confirm whether there are any cancellations or delays to your flight. This is the first time in the airport's history that it has been forced to close because of a mass rally. The rally swelled in size on Monday as a video of a female demonstrator who was shot in the eye by police went viral and enraged protesters. On Sunday, the female protester lost an eye to a beanbag round shot by police while taking part in a street demonstration. The brutal force used by police shocked not just the demonstrators but also people around the world. Amid the widely circulated concerns that China may intervene in Hong Kong with force, the U.S. and Canada have openly expressed their concerns. On Monday, the U.S. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell tweeted any violent crackdown would be unacceptable and said the world is watching, clearly referring to China, which is thought to be considering intervening in the matter with force. 
Canada's Prime Minister also said he's deeply concerned about how the situation is unfolding in Hong Kong and called on China to respectfully treat those Hong Kong citizens who have reasonable concerns toward the government bill. However, on the same day, the State Council of China called the demonstrations a sign of terrorism and said the protesters' actions against the police are crimes because they had deadly weapons. Choi Xiong, Arirang News. President Moon Jae-in says the nation's economy stands strong despite the multiple external factors dragging on its growth. Today, he called on his administration to execute policies at the right time to help get growth back up. Shin Se-min reports. President Moon Jae-in called on the members of his cabinet to cope with the current economic circumstances with calmness, all in the midst of looming external factors. 미국과 중국의 무역 갈등이 지속되고 있는 가운데 일본의 경제 보복까지 더해져 여러모로 우리 경제 상황이 녹록하지 않습니다. President Moon also ordered his administration to exercise vigilance and strong determination in the face of growing fake news and groundless speculation that only adds to market uncertainties. And he said the country still has firm economic fundamentals. 세계적인 신용 평가 기관들의 일치된 평가가 보여주듯이 우리 경제의 기초 체력은 튼튼합니다. He cited a recent sovereign credit rating released by Fitch Ratings last week that kept South Korea a double A minus with a stable outlook. And he pointed out that Korea's rating was two notches higher than Japan's rating. The president added that the domestic economy enjoys positive credibility on the back of its financial soundness, resulting from a low government debt ratio. The president said the government should be more determined to turn the challenges facing the nation into an opportunity to boost the economy and improve competitiveness. The president also said the administration should execute government policies at the right time to help revitalize the nation's economy. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Meanwhile, senior lawmakers with South Korea's ruling party and officials from the Blue House and the government met this afternoon to discuss the latest regarding Japan's export curbs and to review what Seoul's doing to respond. They said that efforts are underway on all fronts to first and foremost minimize the fallout on local industries by helping firms raise their competitiveness and by creating an ecosystem in which small and big companies can prosper together. The three sides said they're taking a flexible approach so they can find a breakthrough in the trade spat. They also agreed to draw up a bigger budget for 2020 to boost the economy and support innovative growth. In a separate closed-door meeting this morning, the ruling party and government agreed on the need for an expansionary budget next year to deal with lingering uncertainties. Of the spending, they're planning to set aside over a billion U.S. dollars to handle Tokyo's trade retaliation. Meanwhile, as South Korea retaliates against Tokyo by officially dropping Japan from its white list of countries with fast-track trade status, a growing number of foreign media outlets are concerned that the situation could drag on for a while. Kim Yo-sun reports. Following South Korea's decision to drop Japan from its fast-track trade white list, many international media outlets forecast a trade road between the Asian neighbors is unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. The New York Times published an article Monday which explained that Seoul's move was anticipated when Japan removed South Korea from its own white list. The article titled South Korea Retaliates Against Japan in Trade and Diplomatic Rift also stated the tit for tat measure shows the two countries will not back down despite President Trump's calls for improved relations. Trump said last Friday that the two nations should sit down and get along with each other. CNN reported Monday that Seoul has heightened the crisis that is already disrupting the global supply chain for large tech companies. U.S.-based business news website Business Insider also said Monday that the decades-long tensions between the two Asian countries are now threatening to boil over. It explained the tensions bubbled to the surface last year when the South Korean Supreme Court ordered certain Japanese companies to compensate South Korean wartime forced laborers. Reuters also reported on Seoul's move, describing it as a measure that deepens the diplomatic and trade road between the two countries. Kim Hyo-san, Arirang News. 
And a number of major health and beauty stores here in South Korea are boycotting products made by the Japanese firm DHC after the company made controversial statements regarding the trade dispute between Seoul and Tokyo. Lee Sung Jae reports. DHC, a Japanese company known for its cosmetics and dietary supplements, entered the South Korean market in 2002 and has been a steady seller ever since. However, after he made controversial statements regarding the trade row between Seoul and Tokyo, a number of popular health and beauty stores in South Korea have announced they are boycotting DHC products. Olive Young says it will remove all DHC products from their online store while removing its DHC products in brick-and-mortar stores to less visible areas. According to Olive Young, due to a contractual agreement, they cannot halt sales completely in offline stores. Others have followed suit. Lalavla have also stopped online sales of DHC products and has halted any additional orders in more than 150 stores nationwide. Loeb's, a health and beauty store run by Lotte Corporation, has also decided to pull all DHC products, both online and offline. The boycott comes as DHC TV uploaded a YouTube video which said the trade row will eventually cool down because Koreans will eventually forget about it. The DHC TV video also included a number of insensitive and historically incorrect commentaries on Korea. Lee Seung Jae, Arirang News. It's time now for an in-depth look at markets around the world, and for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, a global strategist at QM Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me today. Well, lots of things adding to uncertainty right now, including U.S. bond yields and the escalating protests in Hong Kong on Wall Street overnight. Uh, the Dow was down 1.5% and the Nasdaq 1%. What's the story today? Yes, uh, with the Hong Kong protest continuing and the U.S.-China dispute uh, lingering around for a long period of time, um, the U.S. 10 years bond rate have fallen to lows of 1.65%. Uh, the previous historic low was 1.45%, so it's not that far away. And this is a problem because if you look at the 10 years and 2 years rate differential, it has fallen to the 6 to 7 basis points which is lowest in decades. Uh, and some people are saying that this is a sign of recession, or potential sign of recession in the future. Um, now due to that, obviously, uh, Dow was down 1.5%. Nasdaq was down more than 1%. Uh, this was followed by most of the other Asian markets as well. Uh, Hong Kong falling by more than 1.5%. China falling by 0.6%. Shenzhen index was down 0.9%. Also, Nikkei continued to fall by over 1.1%. Uh, Korea also was falling uh, by 0.85%. The cost that was down 06 A little bit less than most of the economies, but nevertheless, the trend seems to continue to be concerned about global recession. Well, now, as expected, the Korean government has decided to take Japan off its white list now. Uh, Japan will be put in a new category of export countries, uh, which means it'll face a tougher approval process. What happened here? What does this mean for trade between the two sides? Sure. Uh, as you said, on the 12th of August, uh, the Korean government excluded Japan from the list of the white countries, so the export procedure preferential, con preferential countries. Um, the current government believes that this measure will be conducted in accordance with the legal procedures in both domestic and international law, and it will not affect the future process with WTO. Uh, the minister, the Song uh, Mo Sung, held a briefing on that day and announced that import export strategic materials would purpose of subdividing the strategic export areas into three and applying strict restrictions. Uh, for Japan, strict standards. Um, however, uh, in the announcement, uh, the detailed export control items was not disclosed. Um, the, clearly, this is escalating the tra trade dispute between these two countries, which might affect the supply chains of the global IT segment. Um, definitely not just uh, U.S. and China, but now Korea and Japan affecting negatively to the global trade uh, which could cause additional concerns for the global economic recession in the future. 
Well, now in terms of exchange rates, uh, the Korean won now uh, has broken through the 1220 uh, mark against the U.S. dollar. Uh, what's driving this? What should we make of this? And where is it going? Yes, I think that it really depends on what happens to Chinese RMB, uh, yuan uh, trend. If you look at the current RMB, it is at 7.1 level. It broke through the psychological barrier of 7. Uh, and that has affected also Korean won breaking through above 1,200 level. Uh, if you look at the historical trend of these two currencies, uh, they pretty much move in tandem uh, as the uh, Chinese renminbi depreciates, Korean won depreciates as well because of their interrelationship on the trade side. Um, now, former the commander-in-chief of NATO, James uh, predicted that the current Hong Kong protest uh, could hurt the U.S.-China trade negotiations. And if this continues and that U.S. has to respond, if the China uses the military to suppress the protesters, that will cause the renminbi to depreciate even further, and which will affect also Korean won to depreciate further to a 1220 level or even more. Um, now, currently, the, all this issue about the trade dispute is making the movement quite unpredictable at this point in time. Yeah, we'll have to keep watching that. Uh, all right, Mr. Yu, thank you for your time this afternoon. Appreciate your insights. Thank you very much. Now, crystal clear pictures on your smartphone are just around the corner. Samsung Electronics has unveiled its newest 108 megapixel mobile image sensor, becoming the first in the industry to go beyond 100 million pixels. Kan hyung reports. Samsung Electronics has introduced the industry's first mobile image sensor that goes beyond 100 million pixels in what's dubbed the ISOCELL Bright HMX. Unveiling its latest addition to its mobile camera technology on Monday, Samsung said the new image sensor with its 108 megapixel will allow smartphone owners to take pictures in high-end DSLR camera quality, something that was once thought to be impossible before. According to the South Korean tech giant, the new image sensor can produce vivid photographs in both dark and bright environments with a bigger surface area and smart ISO mechanism to better absorb light while increasing color accuracy. The industry's first 100 and plus megapixel image sensor also supports 30 frames per second filmed at 6K resolution, meaning its ability to record video without flaws makes it ideal to use in movie and broadcast shootings. Samsung has collaborated with Xiaomi to develop the high-resolution sensor for the Chinese firm's smartphones. Executive Vice President of Sensor Business at Samsung Electronics, Park yong -in, said the company is continuously pushing to engineer its image sensors to capture the world as the human eye does. Co-founder and president of Xiaomi, Lin Bin, underscored the relationship Xiaomi has with Samsung, saying that the two IT giants will continue to cooperate in order to bring not only new mobile camera experiences, but also a platform through which our users can create unique content. Mass production for Samsung's ISOCELL Bright HMX will begin later this month. Kan Yong-woo, Arirang News. The global semiconductor industry is expected to contract this year, but the market for system chips is likely to see an increase in sales. According to semiconductor market research company IC Insights, two out of three chip products, including DRAM and NAND flash, Chips will see a fall in sales this year amid slowing demand, but the other third of products, including system semiconductors, an area Samsung Electronics is investing heavily in, will see growth in sales this year. System semiconductors, also known as non-memory chips, are used to power self-driving cars and AI-enabled devices. In recent months, gaming addiction has been a hot topic around the world after the WHO categorized the condition as a mental disorder. And whether it is one or not, South Korea has been proactive in preventing and treating unhealthy gaming habits among children and teens for years. Our oh Soo Young has this story. For 21 hours a day, 14-year-old Kim has been playing video games throughout the night before she goes to school. I started getting dizzy and shaking at school, and I can't focus in class and my grades have dropped a lot. 
I just keep thinking about gaming and imagine my fingers on the keyboard. But Kim doesn't see herself stopping anytime soon. She sometimes worries she'll never achieve her dream of becoming a novelist. That's one of the reasons why she's spending her summer holiday in rehab. In the mountainous county of Buju, a camp for teenagers like Kim who are addicted to gaming and smartphone usage, keeps them well beyond the reach of digital screens. For two to four weeks, they learn to reconnect with reality through individual and group counselling, community service and creative activities, learning that their hands can do much more than clicking and scrolling. Here in this group therapy session, teenagers are writing a book about their lives in the future and how they achieve their dreams by overcoming their addiction to gaming and smartphone usage. An essential part of the programme is building social connections. As more and more children use digital media from an early age, their offline social bonds become weaker. Many addicts show a lack of social interaction. So a lot of our programs here are dedicated to helping our teens socialize and develop friendships. Given the popularity of online gaming in Korea, with children spending an average of 44 minutes on gaming every day, Korea has been taking measures to curb unhealthy habits. Korea has been proactive in dealing with gaming addiction. There is a law that bans under 16s from playing games after midnight, as well as specified indicators of gaming addiction. When gaming becomes the center of your life, craving and withdrawal symptoms, and when you stop eating, sleeping, going to school, putting things off or socializing properly, if this sign subsists for 12 months, you are considered addicted. The World Health Organization earlier this year classified gaming addiction as a mental disorder, a move that could enable national health authorities to adopt more systematic control and treatment over the condition. However, there's been a backlash from the gaming industry on adopting the WHO standards, citing a lack of scientific proof that gaming addiction is a legitimate illness. But for the teenagers here at this camp, the addiction is real and it has consumed their lives. The U.S. government has set new standards for obtaining permanent residency and U.S. citizenship as part of the Trump administration's efforts to reduce not only illegal but legal immigration as well. The goal is to ensure that new immigrants won't be a drain on public finances. Kim Dami has more. The Trump administration unveiled a new rule on Monday that could deny visas or permanent residency to hundreds of thousands of people for being too poor. The new policy would reject applicants for a temporary or permanent visas who fail to meet income standards or who receive public assistance including food stamps, welfare and public housing. Coming into force on October 15th, the change aims to ensure that immigrants are self-sufficient, according to the administration. Through the public charge rule, President Trump's administration is reinforcing the ideals of self-sufficiency and personal responsibility, ensuring that immigrants are able to support themselves and become successful here in America. The 837-page rule seeks to redefine what it means to be a public charge and who's likely to be one under U.S. immigration law. The current regulations put in place back in 1996 say the term public charge is defined as someone who is primarily dependent on government assistance, meaning it supplies more than half of their income. From now on, wealth, education, age and English language skills will take on greater importance in the process of obtaining a green card. Showing higher levels of income is now much more necessary for visa applicants. Immigrant advocates argue that the rule would discriminate against those from poorer countries and eventually prompt legal residents to give up needed public aid. AP reported over 380,000 out of the 540,000 applicants every year will have to face the new evaluations. And according to the Migration Policy Institute, more than half of all family-based green card applications will be denied under the new rules. Kim Dami, Arirang News.
And that brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching. More live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time.